Hi, I'm Paul Walker. I'm a medical oncologist on Emeritus Faculty at East Carolina University and Chief Medical Officer at Circular Gene. Circular Gene offers a, a liquid biopsy PDL1 test, which assesses plasma cell free RNA PDL1 expression by PCR. I would like to share with you recent data I presented at the ASTRO ASCO Multidisciplinary Thoracic Cancer Symposium looking at plasma cell free RNA PDL1 expression and clinical outcomes with immunotherapy. The current standard of PDL1 testing consists of tissue PDL1 protein IHC staining. As with all tissue, this can be fraught with acquisition difficulties, but also significant PDL1 expression heterogeneity. In this particular study with the IHC brown here, if this was tested for PDL1, PDL1 would be viewed as greater than 50%. However, in all other sites of this particular biopsy, PDL1 expression would be viewed as zero. The data recently presented consisted of a cohort of patients from East Carolina University with plasma cell free RNA PDL1 expression and advanced non small cell lung cancer and treated with immune based regimens compared to a cohort of patients who were treated with chemotherapy alone. I will review this data, but also will review additional plasma PDL1 data outcomes in patients with inoperable non small cell lung cancer, as well as performance status one versus two, and those patients who were plasma PDL1 positive yet tissue PDL1 negative. The Kaplan Meyer overall survival curve on the right represents the circular gene plasma PDL1 positive patients treated with frontline immune based regimens. As of August of this year, with the median follow up of 33 months, the median overall survival is 15 to 18 months, and most importantly, the right side of the curve remains elevated with a 30% three year survival. The curve on the left is the Keynote 042, a frontline Pembro alone versus chemotherapy in patients who were tissue PDO1 positive. The Pembro curve, very similar, in fact, exactly the same, with an early, early drop, a median overall survival of 15 to 18 months, and a 30% three year overall survival. Although the ECU cohort certainly is a small sample size, is retrospective, and from a single institution, it is also very real world data. Five of the 16 patients had symptomatic brain metastases. Seven of the 16 had bone metastases, which notably do poor with immune based therapies. And most, most real world is half of the patients had an ECOG performance status of two or worse. This compares to any clinical trial with immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, excluding symptomatic brain metastases, and only having patients with a PS of asymptomatic zero or a PS of one. Here is the data presented in the oral abstract of plasma PDL1 positive patients treated with either immune based regimen or contemporary cohort treated with chemotherapy. Both the immune treated and the chemotherapy cohort were very similar with half of the patients having a performance status of two or worse. There was a statistically significant difference between the IO treated versus the chemo treated with a p-value of 0 0.014 and a hazard ratio of 0.37 with a 63% reduction in, in mortality with plasma pd one clearly showing a significant predictive immune therapy benefit over chemotherapy. If you superimpose both curves, this is what you get. The Keynote 042 tissue PDL1 positive and the circular gene plasma PDL1 positive with immune therapy, the outcomes are exactly the same. An early drop, 15 to 18 months median overall survival, and the right side of the curve, 30% three year overall survival for tissue PDL1 and Pembro or circular gene plasma PDL1 and immune based regimens. The only difference is in the chemotherapy treated patients with the clinical trial having a, a very select patient population of PS0 or 1 and no symptomatic brain metastases, the chemotherapy arm did surprisingly well, where in the real world, the chemotherapy arm alone is not going to do very well. In comparison, Keynote 042, p-value 0.0018, hazard ratio 0.81, 
circular gene plasma, pd one p-value 0 0.014, hazard ratio of, at, that should be a hazard ratio of 0 0.376. In a real world population, the data indicates plasma pd one is as predictive as tissue pd one in the Merck clinical trial population. I want to move on to the inoperable stage three subset of patients. Now with the Pacific trial being the standard CRT followed by Duralumab, to the left is the Pacific trial. Remember, tissue pd one negative before treatment did not get an additional benefit of Duralumab after CRT. It was only in the patients who were tissue pd one positive. And certainly a significant benefit, 62% three-year overall survival, 45% for the CRT alone. To the right is the ECU cohort of patients with inoperable stage 3 treated with the Pacific paradigm as of August of this year in a median follow-up of 23 months. There's a 90% ongoing survival. Our historical data at ECU was a 32% three-year overall survival. This is certainly hypothesis generating, but to me very enticing given the potential immune pneumonitis toxicity of Duralumab after CRT to better define who is going who is going to get the additional curative benefit of Duralumab. And, and another issue is with tissue pd one it is before treatment. It is known that CRT can induce pd one and there may be patients who are pd one negative initially but in uh, pd one positive after CRT and plasma can assess that and potentially, again, identify a very highly curative subset of patients. There is a difference in outcomes with immune-based therapies, whether ECOG or PS is 0 or 1 compared to 2. Recent flat iron health data demonstrated a 16% three-year overall survival in patients with an ECOG PS of 2 treated with immune therapy, whereas an ECOG PS of 0 or 1 was up to that standard 30% range. In our population, plasma pd one was equally predictive of an immune therapy benefit, whether ECOG PS of 1 or ECOG PS of 2 with a 32% three-year overall survival, even with an ECOG PS of 2. There was a subset of patients who were circular gene plasma pd one positive, yet tissue pd one 22 c 3 ihc negative. So plasma pd one positive, tissue pd one negative. And that represented five of the 16, 31% of the patients. And that seems to be a consistent number with in another cohort of, of ECU advanced non-small cell lung cancer patients, it was also at, at 30% range that were plasma pd one positive and tissue pd one negative. Remarkably, there was a 50% three-year overall survival in those patients, plasma pd one positive and tissue pd one negative. A comparison to Keynote 189, which was upfront chemo IO versus chemo and those who were tissue pd one negative, there was only a 20% three-year overall survival. The plasma pd one still demonstrated a robust immune therapy treatment benefit even when tissue pd one was negative. This last slide does represent my ECU and circular gene bias. But I will show it anyway, because this is what pharma frequently does. This represents all of the ECU plasma pd one positive patients, whether in operable stage three or metastatic stage four, treated with immune-based regimens. In Keynote 042, 12 to 13% of the patients were really locally advanced and received thoracic radiation therapy. Combining all of the ECU patients, the median overall survival, was at the two-year range with a 50% three-year overall survival. The limitations of this data are well recognized. Small sample size, single institution, and retrospective. 
Our plans at Circular Gene are to further demonstrate and validate our plasma cell free RNA PDL1 assay as an immune therapy predictive biomarker, looking at banked plasma and clinical outcomes with immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, as well as a prospective clinical trial. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your Circular Gene field representative or myself. I would be happy, absolutely happy and excited to discuss further. Thank you.